Okay, so let's uh, just finish off uh, the last video, just kind of cut out on this last part. Um, so I can just carry on. Uh, I'll do it as a standalone question. Um, basically, we'll ignore the first part. We won't deduce this, but we'll we'll just assume that it is true. We want to illustrate the result for theta is pi over 2 on an argon diagram. Um, so basically, if we work about each of these in turn, uh, we want to find e to i pi over 2. We want to show first off what this looks like on the argon diagram. Well, let's remember that what this actually means is um, cos of pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Uh, and if we convert both of those, well, pi over 2 of cos is going to be 0, and i sine over 2 is going to be 1. So we end up with uh, the i pi over 2 is going to be uh, just the imaginary uh, number. Uh, and then we think about what that looks like on the argon diagram. Well, here's the argon diagram. It's actually going to be this point here, where it's on the imaginary axis, um, and it's it's a, a distance, a distance of one from zero zero. Um, and what we do now is we actually note that these three terms here um, are basically roots of unity because they they're actually kind of adding together to give us a zero. So this is, this is one of our solutions. The other two solutions, well, there's three of them. The third root of unity, and uh, they're going to be equally spaced out on the argon diagram. So uh, if this is one solution here, the other solutions are going to be here and here. Um, and basically, the angle between each of those three will be the same. Um, and, and in effect, they will cancel out. Um, to give us a zero. Uh, so if this is a length of one, this is also a length of one, this is also a length of one. So this is kind of a sketched uh, argon diagram. Now we could work that out by actually uh, putting in, if we actually worked out the second equation, we'd have e to the i and then pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 3. And we could actually work out the complex number that this gives us in Cartesian form, and it would actually be this one here, uh, but it's easier um, just to kind of use that rule and go straight to that, that fact there. Okay, so next question. Um, we can look at this. So solve the equation z cubed equals minus 2 plus... Uh, 2i giving you answer in modulus argument form. Uh, probably first thing to do is actually try and sketch out minus 2 plus 2i uh, and, and see what that looks like. So we'll sketch on the argon diagram. Um, we're going to have minus 2 plus 2i. So it's going to give us something like that. Well, that is 2 and that is 2. Let's label that as theta 1. But the theta that we're actually looking at uh, is that theta 2 there. Um, that's the theta 1 first. So uh, we can basically use uh, trigonometry to work out theta and we can work out the length of that as well. So we've got tan theta 1. Tan of theta 1 is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1. So therefore, uh, theta 1 is going to be pi over 4, therefore theta 2 is going to be, well this is 180 degrees, or pi, so theta 2 is going to be pi take away pi over 4, um, which is going to give us 3 pi over 4. Okay, so we've worked out uh, the argument here, then we can also work out the modulus, now we can work out the modulus by using uh, Pythagoras, if we've got that is 2 and that is 2, then this, this modulus here, r squared is equal to 2 squared plus 2 squared, so therefore r is uh, the square root of 8. 
Okay, so so from that we can rewrite this as um, we've got root eight of cos three pi over four plus i sine three pi over four. Okay, and The next thing that we need to do from that um, is basically find the cube cube root of that. In effect, we've got z cubed is this thing here. We've just worked out what this is. So if we've got, in effect, we've just said that z cubed is equal to, to this thing here. Well, therefore, z is going to be the cube root of that. Now, I can cube root that by using uh, de Moivre's theorem. So, by using De Moivre's theorem, I'm going to get this, and cos 3 pi over 4 third plus 2 pi over 3, that's a k, plus i sine 3 pi 4 third plus 2 pi over 3 just kind of run out of room there that should be k lots of that as well um okay so well let's concentrate on the on the first solution first um i can tidy up Let's, let's just write that a little bit better. So I can say that 8 is, I can rewrite root 8 as that. So that's going to be 2 to the power 3 and then the square root in it. And that's going to be cos, um, all those are going to cancel out. So it's going to be pi over 4 plus. 2 pi cubed k plus i. This is going to equally cancel out there, so that's going to be pi over 4 plus 2 pi 3 k. There's brackets in. Okay, so it's probably a little bit easier to see from that. Um, and then again, I can cancel this out or can simplify this a little bit uh, using um, laws of indices. That's going to give me uh, 2 to the power half, which is square root of 2. And then I've basically got three uh, different solutions. Um, I'm going to have the solution when k equals 0 k equals 1 and k equals 2. Um, so let's work out the first of those solutions. Let's say that z1 is going to be when k equals 0. That's going to give me cos pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. That's my first solution. Second solution, z2, it's going to be root 2. And this is going to be cos pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3. And then my third solution is going to be root 2 cos, and then this is going to be pi over 4 plus. 4 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 3. Okay, and there we go. Those are my three uh, my three answers. Uh, of course, I could simplify this a little bit, um, but I think that's enough to kind of show show the method that is required. Okay, and uh, the last question. I, I think we'll probably just look at. Um, 
the first part uh, goes on a bit this second bit so there we go I want uh, I've got z equals cos theta plus i sine theta I want to show that the imaginary part of that is equal to zero well if z is cos theta plus i sine theta then I'm going to have z n equals cos n theta plus i sine n theta and equally 1 over z n is z to the minus n so z to the minus n is going to be cos minus n theta plus i sine minus n theta um, and I can simplify that uh, through symmetry in the graph so that is the same as cos n theta plus i so minus i sine n theta um, remember that is z minus n so therefore if I if I add those two together so therefore if I have z n plus z to the minus n well that's going to give me 2 2 cos n theta and well the, the imaginary part is going to be 0 um, and that's all I needed to show because all those two have just cancelled out so this means the imaginary part of those two, uh, two things there is going to be equal to 0 and I've just done that so all that's left is is the real part here.